Yes. Mm. Cross River Tensile Live on Seattle TV. We will talk health and other related matters. So we promise you we're going to talk uh, cervical cancer prevention because this is actually the week, cervical cancer prevention week. Mm -hmm. We started on the 21st of January and it's going to last till 27th of January this year, 2019. And uh, to talk about the week and every activities, what we need to know about cervical cancer, we have very distinguished Nigerians in the studio. And of course, I used to call her our regular. Mm the pink lady, the president of Pink Africa. Is it Pink Africa? Pink Africa. Pink Africa. Africa, Africa, Africa Foundation. Foundation. Yeah. Dr. Nchewiani, good morning and welcome. Good morning, listeners. And good I have, viewers. Mm, let, me, let, me let me continue with the ladies. Still on our ladies here. We have Ajia Latifa. Latifa Idanye. Okay, she's the Secretary Federation of Muslim Women of Nigeria. Of course, they say cervical cancer, don't know whether you're Muslim or you're Christian. So we're here as one body and one Nigeria. We also have on set Dr. John Egbe, who is a resident doctor, a consultant, a resident doctor uh, of obstetric and gynecology, University of Calabar Teaching Hospital. Good morning and welcome to the program. Thank God I, I'm not alone on set because I wanted to be so. I have another fellow man. You're blessed among women. No, we, we are, are blessed among women. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Dr. Nchari, let's hmm. dwell on it. Let's dwell on cervical, cervical cancer. cancer. Let's look at the activities. Okay. Um, the month of January is dedicated to cervical cancer awareness. But the last week in the month of January is. <laughs> We talk about prevention of cervical cancer. So what is cervical cancer? I think it was mm, actually yeah. there. Yeah. Um, so the cervix is the neck of the womb. If you're a woman and you go to put to bed, when you are almost, when you start feeling labor pangs, the nurse comes to check you and says 2 cm. That place where she says 2 cm is the neck of the womb. That's where the cancer affects. Uh -huh. What is cancer? Cancer is when the cells in the body or in any part of the body begins to grab normally. Either it gets bigger or gets smaller or it, it, it's more in number or less in number, or the number of cells that are supposed to die refuses to die, they begin to mutate or change into other cells, it grows into a mass, and it occupies where it's not supposed to be, it becomes a cancer, so that is a cancer. So when these cells, abnormal cells, are found in the neck of the womb, it is called cervical cancer. Now, cervical cancer is the second commonest cancer after breast cancer, and it affects all women of all creeds, race, irrespective of religious affiliation, sexual dispositions, irrespective of whether you're white or black, or political affiliations. It affects everybody. Now, what will you say are the causes here? Now, cervical cancer is one of the preventable cancers because we know the cause. The cause of cervical cancer is caused by a virus called human papilloma virus. There are many subtypes of this virus. However, the ones that, the, the virulent strain, the 16, 18, and then 30, yes, the first two strains of virulent, yes, are the ones that cause cervical cancer. And it's sexually transmitted. Uh -huh. Yes, you get it from sexual intercourse. So if you've ever had sex and you're a woman, you're at risk of having cervical cancer. That's what cervical, is that, is, that is the nitty bit about. Having sex with one who is affected or infected with this. You never can tell who is affected. <laughs> so that's why we call it a risk factor. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, if, and, and this is one of the cancers you're not, we, we're not sure the, the condom protects from. Yes. Okay. So once you've had sexual intercourse, you are a woman, you are at risk. And then the age of having sexual intercourse, age at first sexual intercourse, puts you at greater risk. It, now we, still, we are told by the uh, psychologists and the child psychiatrists that the age of sexual intercourse is dropping. Initially it used to be 15, 18. Now we're getting 8, 10, 11. And then the virus has an incubation period of 10 to 15 years. So if you've had your first sexual intercourse, and God forbid you had intercourse with someone who has the hemopapilloma virus at age 10, that means by age 18, you begin to exhibit oh. symptoms. And two years ago, we picked up like two cases in Malabo, in the, called 8 and 9, ages 19, 21. What first stage. What happens to the man here? Well, well, the doctor is saying so. Let the doctor and Chile rest a little bit. Let's, let's go to ONG. What happens with the man? With the man. Is the man, the man is the carrier of papilloma virus? Or the woman is the carrier? The is not at risk of cervical cancer. Mm. Okay. Because doesn't have cells, mm -hmm. okay. but he 
is it carry, carries the virus, and other strands of the virus manifest other symptoms other than cervical cancer. Okay. But for the purpose of this discourse, it is important for us to know that a man does not manifest with symptoms of cervical cancer. Okay. It is only a disease of women okay. that men also contribute right. to as they become well, like you said earlier, cervical cancer is a cancer that is totally preventable. That's because it has a very long incubation period. It avails us a window of opportunity to really stop progression from even onset of symptoms to manifestation of uh, the cervical the disease itself. On this note, I'd like us to know that there are what we call pre-malignant lesions. These are lesions that occur prior to establishment of full bone cancer. Okay. That's essentially where you can stop it. And that's basically why we are here to educate men on the fact that there's what we call screening. Screening exercises are those of opportunity to pick up these malig uh, pre malignant lesions. And then, if we expose these pre malignant lesions to treatment, there is, depending on the modality of treatment, there is a 95 to 98% chance of reversion to start. So, that means if we offer treatment, for 95% of the times, women with premalignant lesions will not end up developing cervical cancer. But for 5% of the times, they may progress to persistent disease that may eventually lead to establishment of cancer. However, symptoms range from um, unexplained weight loss. A woman who suddenly starts losing weight should be worried about the fact that there could be cancer somewhere. The other symptoms include coital bleeding or post-coital bleeding or contact bleeding. That's sex. Sexually, when in the course of having sex, the woman starts bleeding okay. because oh, of that. Sex. Comes, or even after sex. Maybe when there's... No, no, it doesn't have to be a cut. Once there's any contact, because the tissues around that area become soft and friable, easily breakable. So as soon as there's contact, the woman starts bleeding. There's also what they call intermenstrual bleeding. The woman who has 21 days cycle, that means it takes 21 days for menses to resume. But if before 21 days a woman sees her menses or sees bleeding before a subsequent and she bleeds again on the 21st, that means she has to check herself. Okay, before we allow the secretary to talk, I want to ask you that, Cherry. When you say women who have uh, tight pelvis when it comes to bed, uh, delivering hair, and uh, they are advised to go for CS, are they having the risk of uh, coming down with this or cervical cancer? No, there's no risk factor associated with the, the mode of delivery. Okay. Now, the risk factors associated with anything that they have to be the number of times you deliver. So, people have many children, more than four kids, four, more than four children, are at risk simply because as you go to deliver, that region is traumatized. So, there's the, the cells there become susceptible to being infected by the virus. So, and then another thing is the number of sexual partners you have, or maybe your husband has other sexual partners, you're more at risk, even if you're keeping to one husband. Or you have, you marry a new husband, you may marry, have, have, have intercourse with another partner, you are at risk. So it has nothing to do with mode of delivery. If we talk about coit uh, coitals, coitus, and co um, coital uh, bleed, what simply put, that just means that once, when you're in the process of having sex, after withdrawal, you find out that you go to clean yourself, you see a splash of blood on the tissue. That's post-coital bleed. Or in the course of intercourse, in between intercourse, there's a splash of blood that you cannot explain. That's what, those are the stages. No, no, it doesn't mean that. It means, that, that what, what we mean is that despite adequate lubrication during sexual intercourse, you still bleed. That's, that's an, a red flag for you. You need to check. Okay, Adrian, what can you say about this? Mm. <laughs> We have, uh, as a Muslim, I'm presenting for more. We have more uh, females okay. in, that have a lesser age that audible, yeah. gets married, like uh, in the north, especially in the north. Mm. You have a uh, female Older from age, yeah. yes, in that age getting married. 10 years, 12 years, yes, 11 years. And uh, most times they have the number of children more than we talked about the other equipment. Are they at the risk? Yes. yes. The so risk. they are more at risk. At risk. So what is your message to this person? To tell them to come and sometimes, you know, because of the religion, some say uh, they can't go out because we are Muslims, we don't allow anybody to check, maybe shyness and all that. There is no problem. They can come out and get tested. 
if it's happening, they, they, they are infected. They can just nip it at the door. I know so, in a situation like this, some mothers will tell you they have kids that got married 10 years ago mm -hmm. at this age, but nothing happens to them. But you are a professional here. What would be your advice to such a mother out there? I want to know if they know their status. You cannot say that except you know your status. And it is advocated that for prevention, we encourage you to get screened. The first aid at sexual intercourse is 18 years of age to be as you, assuming that all things are equal. So that's the first period to get screened. You get screened every year for cervical cancer until you turn 30. After age 30, you can, if you're normal for the past screening periods, you can screen every two, three years and then until you turn 70. After 70, you are okay. We don't need to worry about the cervix yeah, yeah. anymore. So we want to say, before you talk about, I married, I, I had children 10 years ago, I don't have issues. Have you checked the cervix? There are special ways of examining the cervix. The old med the methods, we, we, we do the, the VIA, that's the visual inspection with acetic acid. There's the pap smear, which is the common one. And there's the new one, which is the HPV. It, HPV DNA test, testing, which is more expensive, which we are thinking that with collaboration from Ministry of Health and other quarters, we'll be able to uh, get okay, together. Well, and then another thing we want to talk about, we want to talk about the vaccine. There's actually a okay. vaccine for cervical cancer okay. prevention, and it's best 11 to 18 years of age. So we're trying to be calling on uh, people, philanthropists, help us get the vaccine. It takes about 25,000 to vaccinate one child, and then the boys can also take the vaccine too. Okay. So it's... 25,000 Yes. So, okay. but it can be substituted by well-meaning Nigerians and even foreign partners if we find one. Okay. And that's what we are hoping that by the grace of God, we'll be able to do that and bring it back home. So we want to say, if you have money and you have a girl child who's not been exposed sexually, so the responsibility on the, on the mothers, please get the vaccine. And it's taken over three people. Okay, that was a young child who is okay. not supposed to say. And then the boys too. That are not exposed. Because, because it will also help them prevent from... Okay, but uh, yeah. well, the vaccine is strictly for those who are not supposed to send you. Yes, and then because we cannot say for sure, it, I think it's still under studies. That even it's if still under study. And then for those aged between 18 and 26, they can also ask okay, the shortly before we wrap up the no, let me let me I want to ask <laughs> Dr. Egbe okay. this question. You know, this, I'm directing this question to you because you're ONG and uh, the male. Now, they said the male are the contributor factor to this survival yeah. cancer. This survival cancer. You say they are one of they are mainly carriers of the linear virus. So, how can the male how can we solve this problem from the male access to enable them not to be carriers of this virus? Well, that's a very wonderful question. Yeah. Like she said, she did mention one of the risk factors of multiple cells with partners. Okay. If a male will respect himself and stay with one woman, that's it. The other risk factor is smoking. Okay. Yeah. If people do smoking, the caffeine content of smoke, okay. or nicotine rather, content of smoke, okay. goes to um, this, uh, form what they call dysplasia, okay. or abnormality, it transforms the cell type at the level of the service, okay. predisposing the service to development of cervical cancer, or okay. lesions that simulate cervical cancer. Okay. So the general um, advice is for men to be faithful in order not to pick up the virus, because it's not as if the virus is responsible in men. Okay. It is when they reach out for it that they can fetch it. Okay, so what is I think I'm, I think I'm covered. Pink <laughs> Africa Foundation. Let's look at the activities. Okay, for Pink Africa Foundation, we decided that um, we will go a step further from education by actually encouraging the women to know their status. So we're collaborating with Fund One Federation of Muslim Women to carry out screening for the first 200 women. And then we are saying that irrespective of your religion or creed, meet us at the Nasarawa Healthcare, Primary Healthcare Center. Uh, our DG, the Primary Healthcare Development Agency, DG Honorable Beta Edu, has benevolently decided to support the program too. So we're going to Nasarawa. I'm not sure some people, but when we were doing a field study. Nasarawa is here in Calabar. Yes, yeah, Nasarawa, you can imagine a that. It's a, <laughs> it's a village it's a in Calabar. And then we have many women residents there who may not even know anything about the disease. But there's a primary health care center, a functional primary health care center there, where we're going to carry out screening for the first 200 women um, for free. Ajia, do you think this will help yes. the women from this part? Yes. On so Saturday, you, sorry. It's a.m. It's a.m. on Saturday. Okay. So, so what are you doing to sensitize the women to come at Emma? We talk to the 
will talk to him, go to their, sometimes we talk to their husband because most times they will be willing to come and but the okay. husband will release them. So okay. how has the response been? Positive. Okay. Okay. okay uh, before we, we we wrap up this interview segment, uh, let's quickly Look at the, time. the activities and the time of uh, events line up for. Okay, we will begin at 8 a.m. Uh, at the Nasra Primary Health Care Centre on Saturday, 26th of January. And then any all any, if we find any positive cases in stage one or two, we refer to General Hospital Calabar, a commissioner for health, with collaboration with Pathfinder. They have what we call the carotherapy machine which just burns off those cells in the pre-malignant phase, like he said, and the woman will be free for many years to come. And the medical checkup is free. It's free. It's free. Okay. Again for this. 8 a.m. in the morning. Everybody's invited, whether you're Christian, Muslim, traditional, mm -hmm. believer. Okay. You're all invited. Okay. Please. Both boys and girls. Okay. No, only, only women. Okay. Uh, I, think, I, think, I think more of the cervical cancer. I think now the women can, you know, Will is our relief that this has come to us. Not only in Nasarawa, we don't say because we are, they are going to Nasarawa village. Mm. Mm -mm. If you're a woman and you're resident in Costa Rica, yes, I forgot to say. You sorry, you need. You need. There are other need. centers you can go for screening. Okay. The Medical Women's Clinic at the Moro Two Moro, the okay. in the courthouse. Okay. There's daily screening there in the World Women's Clinic. Okay. Not just Saturday. Yes, okay. every, day. every day. And then the General Hospital has a Pathfinder Clinic in collaboration with Cross Rivers State Ministry of. Health. That's one of the first things our Commissioner for Health did when she came in. So there's a clinic there and it is daily. Oh, daily. So you can just stroll in there. <laughs> well, she's proud to be a woman. Me, I'm proud to be a woman. <laughs> so one, I want to thank uh, Dr. Nchewi, who is the president of Pink Africa Foundation, for all the good job you've been doing mm -hmm. to serve the women and, of course, the constituency where you belong as a Nigerian. And thank you so much. Thank you for And of course, Dr. Egbe, who is the ONG resident doctor at the University of Calabar Teaching Hospital. Thank you for bailing the mail, on bailing me here on set. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. So Adia Yayati. Adia Latifa, Secretary Federation of Muslim Women of mm -hmm. Nigeria. Nigeria, yeah, big cross of us, did am I right? Yeah. Okay, she's doing so well, and uh, she's promised that all the women, Muslim women, have to do it because the whole thing is moving down. Before they say it was 18, now has come to 10 and 12. Let's just hope we do not get to 9 and 7. Mm -mm, God mm, forbid. Okay. So, that's it on our interview segment on the prevention of cervical cancer. Of course, the week yes. started on the 21st of January and to run till 27th of January. And we believe the women, of course, will be bailed out of cervical cancer. Thank you so much. Yeah, and the show continues yeah, shortly. Section, it's over. Mm -hmm. The program continues shortly. Stay with us. Thank you. Thank you.